Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and we are on air, and I want to thank you for coming back, because we all know you don't have to, but I thank you. Um, we have this piece. I, did, I ground that up this morning, polished it off a little bit, didn't go right humdaddy on it, but I got it looking good, good enough for me to carry on. This is the point where I'm at. This back piece of the car has to be removed to continue on far as I'm concerned. What I've got going on is I got to know where to cut it off in the back. Uh, what I did is, is I grabbed I grabbed my straight edge. So what I'm doing today is I'm cutting off the back of the car and squaring up the rest of the square stock to finish sheathing it in. So in order to, I made a couple pieces of square stock, bang bang on the floor. I just took this and stuck it on there like that, put it on the floor, and I drew a mark. You can see where I laid it on the back of the cab. I went down and I've got a mark. Basically, and that's what I'm doing. I'm going to cut the floor off of the car of the car and take it off and then I'm going to put some square stock down like so. And then I'm going to weld the floor to the square stock to the hump and then I'm going to make a couple corners here just like this to go to the post. So now I have some place to cap it off and to finish it off. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a couple lines. I didn't finish drawing a couple lines there. I'm going to cut the cab off and or cut the back of the floor off and uh, move on. So what I've done is, is I've made two pieces of square stock the exactly the same. I've, I'm, I've got a point right here in the body where it, it goes up. And what I've done is, is I've just bring my square stock right to that point. I've done the exact same thing to the other side. There's a little point right there where it comes up. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to mark the other side. I got the other side marked pretty good there. And I'm going to unbolt it and cut it off. I might leave a little extra just in case. So I'm looking right around the same line there as you can see. I'm in the in the in amongst the center of that piece there. I'm in the amongst of that thing there. I'm about a quarter of an inch, a little better of a quarter of an inch. I'm a little better about a quarter of an inch from this side. Um, just eyeing every piece up. Like I got a little mark here, I'm about a quarter inch away from that, exact same thing as on that side. So I want to get this removed and be able to bring the floor up and weld it to the square stock and get rocking and rolling with it. I have a couple body mounts that I'm going to take off and get rid of. So this is where it really is going to be a truck. I'm, I'm almost at the end of the surgery of making a four-door car into a truck. I have some more sheet metal to make. Um, this piece here I think is going to be basic. Basic. Roller over there. Make a paper pattern so it goes around the hump, down around their square stock. This right here is going to be trying. Um, not This piece I made look easy yesterday I think and everybody that watched I thought probably you know it's pretty basic stuff made it look easy but this piece right here goes like this and goes like this so we have another issue going on right there that someone might think is hard but we're going to try to make it easy I'm just going to cut the body the bolt off here make it easier for myself just in, instead of getting underneath the the car trying to grab the wrenches to get it off I just find sometimes it's easier just to grab a grinder Jolene looks amazing today as always my amazing Jolene my amazing Jolene alrighty um, I can see that it's bolted down here. I've got a bolt right there. I'm going to have to probably... I've got a couple bolts here I'm going to have to get off. I've got one down in there they've welded on. And um, I'm going to try to take this side off first. I'm not sure if it's got a nut on the other side that I have to 
try to hold and get off, but I wonder if I can cut that one off. I'm gonna try to cut it. I'm gonna try to cut it. Nope. I think it's gonna be easier if I take a hammer and put a socket on it. I don't think I can get a socket on where it's at. We'll get this back piece cut off just as quick as possible. Look at that now. I just ruined it. <laughs> Not really. 9 sixteenths, I think. We'll get a... Sit on the ground. Got my glasses on, I can't see. Thought I had a half inch. One of them air ratchet there. Right there. Put the air on it, see if it comes off. If it don't, we'll cut it off. We're gonna get to see what the chassis looks like today. that now would you I'm glad I did that watch yourself sweetheart not sure what that's screwing into but it's got to come off must be going not sure even what that's going into all right as I look I have another one down in there and I have another one in that hole down there. I've been looking at it before we started. This one over here, this one over here is fine. That one there don't look, well, it looks like it got a newer washer on it and uh, a newer nut on it. I'm going to grab an extension and see if I can get it off. On the other side, I think they've welded it. Not sure what that means, but they didn't want it to come off. I guess that's what it means. Will that one come off? On the other side, it's not going to come off because I said it's welded. So I'm going to cut a hole and cut it off. Sometimes when I cut this car apart, it smells funny. Like there's different smells that come out of it. And it's like, it's almost like, you know, grabbing a pair of dirty shorts. <laughs> like it's, it's funny how this different smells come out of it. Alrighty, there's the, the nut there that I'm thinking that has to be. Sometimes a fella can get pretty crude when he wants to, but I think I got her. Alrighty. I'm gonna change the blade on this. Basically, I guess the point of the back of the cab and the floor, I guess this was the trick, um, is to put that on there and, and you know flatten it out and get myself a line where it's gonna end or where it's gonna where I'm gonna cut it off. It's in a little ways. What I mean is it's it's fatter here. Than down there and I think that's okay by looks of most trucks I think that's what happens anyways 
but it doesn't matter whether it is or whether it's not. I, sh I want my metal to come down nice. I wouldn't, wouldn't want it to, I wouldn't want to do this. I wouldn't want to kick it out like that and put my, my square stock out like that when my metal's here and I have a big kink in the back. I, I more or less got to run it with the metal that I've got there now um, to make it look right as far as I'm concerned. I had a zip cut here somewhere. Where did I throw that bad boy? I was playing with that. That's, what's that? Queen Jolene knows where it's at. She knows where it's at. For me, this is a, a big part. Um, Jolene was gone this morning. She, she's had a few things on her plate that she's been dealing with or has to deal with. And um, I was going to cut it off, but I really feel like this is a good opportunity to everybody see where it's being cut off and, and what it's going to look like. Because I've never seen the chassis. Um, I know what the chassis sort of looks like underneath, but I do not know what it looks like on top. When I was, we were just talking here, me and Jolene, I'm looking at the chassis, and you can see, or I can see, it's a bit pitted. And I said, Jolene, I said, how would I ever get that smooth? You know, just kind of asking she said well you have to sandblast and fill it exactly right you, you in order to make a chassis look spectacular or look really nice you'd have to sandblast it and fill it you're not going to sandblast a pitted chassis and paint it and make it look nice it's not going to happen if you see a chassis that is amazing and is nice and clean and smooth and shiny well you know they've done some um filling and painting and priming so I'm going to cut this bad boy off right on the line or right behind the line a little bit and I'm going to pull the back of this bad boy off. have to remember I've got chassis and cross members underneath so if I feel like I'm grinding a little too much I just back off because I know there must be a cross member there or the chassis there and if I've touched it I'll just run a little weld on it I'm not going to cut right through it obviously thinking I didn't do a bad job. <laughs> That's cutting that off, that is. A little bit there, I see. Have to remind yourself, there's a chassis underneath there. Got a little bit right here I want to cut. What happens? I mean, they'll tear that apart. Hit that with a hammer, maybe. Behind me.
so. No messing around, man. No messing around. To the other side. Seconds. It's amazing how much a rust can... Alrighty. I'm saying that we're broke free. some metal there on this side. Need a zip cut. I'm just as anxious to see as you are. I am, I am, I am. Okay. Just got a little more metal to cut. And I am probably scoring it a little bit, but ah, I probably am scoring it a little bit, but that's okay. I can touch it with the welder. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that now, would you? Is there one on that side? That one's cut off. Got a little mount right there. There we go. We're almost there, boys. We're almost there. I'm hoping that I see a fairly decent chassis. I see pits, but <laughs> should be okay. And we did not go anywhere, the cab did not go anywhere, because 
the post is welded to the top of the floor and then the post has a, a bolt going down through. This is all metal that's going to be discarded. That's what the underneath of her looked like. And here's what we have. I did not touch the frame whatsoever. They've got You got to see I got a little piece going on here. Not a bad piece. Not a bad piece. Didn't hurt it much. Not at all. Not a bad piece at all. Just looking the chassis over actually. Right at the present moment. Doesn't look that bad, but we can see that it's got pits in it. Must have been a grape at one time or a, or a, or a peach. It's a peach. But I see it's got a piece over there in the chassis. I think that piece was nicely done. I'm not going to stress about it. Um, it's, it's covered up one of the the body uh, holes here, which is not not a bad thing. Not a bad thing whatsoever. Scored it there a little tiny bit. That's fine. Scored it over there a little tiny bit, which is fine. Alrighty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this square stock on here. And I'm going to bring the floor up to the square stock and weld it all the way along there, weld it on there. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Got a piece over here. I'm not going to replace place the floor in the truck. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any, anything necessary for me to do that. Doesn't go that way. Goes that way. I don't think it's necessary for me to replace the floor in the truck. Not at all. Not at all. Just looking at there's a there's a carriage bolt going down through right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we have the same distance between the square stock on that carriage bolt as we do on this side so there's two carriage bolts in it and I sort of just want to make the same distance so if you look at the distance between that carriage bolt and we look at the distance on this carriage bolt on this side we're just going to try to keep them basically the same to do it the same I'm going to start the welder up what I'm going to do is is I'm going to tack them in place. Just going to tack the end, tack there, and bring it up in the middle. And the welder on. The chassis's got a little bit of meat going there. I think maybe might want to be looked at, but we'll deal with it. Alrighty. So I'm just going to. Weld this on the tunnel on this side, saying it's okay. Basically, the metal is going to come down, and we want I'm going to go there. The reason is I want the metal to come down on this, and then come down on this, nice and flat. That's all. I'm going to tack that in place. I'm to tack this one over here in place. Just tacking them for now. On this side, I kept the square stock. On that side of the line, I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. I've got, the, I can see the distance over there. Looks about the same distance to me.
I'm talking about the distance in between here. That's what I'm talking about. Now, as I have that in there, that makes me happy. Alrighty. I'll run some water along here. It's not performing well. That's okay. <laughs> on this truck, on the underneath of it, you can see that they must have hit it with a, an undercoating or a rock guard. And it does look a lot better than the center of it where it's rusty. I mean, if you black it out, you can sure tell how it looks nice. If you want to come over to the passenger side, you can see underneath how much work would have been done to fix it, you know, to do it right and, and fix it nice. There's a bit of, bit of work going on there, you know, in the wheel wells as we're showing that. As we're doing the truck out of, this, out of this deal, I think that we're going forward because of the amount of work that we're going to have to do to make it look good. So I've got them tacked on in place where I want them. This is what I'm going to do. And I'll show you, just so you know, just so you know. That's what we're doing it for. So I'm just gonna take all this metal. See where I wanna clamp it, put it on. All that metal along the back, along here, I'm gonna bring that up tight and right and weld it continuously all the way along there so that floor cannot go anywhere. So we have a piece of square stock. So there's a little bit of access going on there. That's okay. We'll end up taking a flapper wheel and a grinder, knocking it off. But basically what I wanna do is because I want to make it come up all up tight like that, and then I'll weld that floor completely to that square stock. And it's sitting on the chassis over here. If it's off this a little bit, it can have a, um, a shim of rubber. It can be bolted down there if it wants to be. I think we have a bolt up here, which is keeping it down. They got to weld it right here, which is not the way I'd want to do it. But you can see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to tack it where it's tight and then move the clamp and then grind it off and flush it off. So I actually I can do right, a couple right now where I've got it clamped up there. It's a truck. It's cut off. Cool. We do not have a truck chassis. That does not matter. Does not matter. We, don't, we do not have a truck chassis, we have a car chassis, and it does not matter to me. We are going to put a little box on it. I don't say a little box, but we're going to put a box on it. That spot of welds just to hold it in place. Because I'm going to want to grind it all off and flush it off and make it flat before I weld it. Weld on it to hold it in place. Try grind it off. Holds the floor up nice, tight, and right. Something like this, you'd want to make sure that you stay out in your shop where we know we where, where, where we know it's undercoated. You'd want to stay out in your shop for a half hour after you weld this up to know it's not on fire. Or I would. Alrighty. 
get a hammer, beat that up so it's tight. right on that there we go just wanted to bend that up so it was right or it looked good try not to weld my clamp which I didn't alrighty so I'm just gonna tack that side um, show you what I'm doing there and how I'm gonna do that flapper wheel Some of it's going to come off, obviously, but I want it to... I get it nice and flushed off like that, and then I can weld a nice... Uh, that one there could come up some. Let's do this. I want to cut that weld off a little bit. Not gonna do it for me. Gonna get another grinder. Zip cut. That's what I want. Voila. I'm just going to weld that on just a little bit better. Take the grinder, flush it off. When I'm welding it this way, and I've got the metal flushed off with the square stock, when I'm welding it this way, the metal that's underneath there would be penetrating and melting off to go to that, so I have no fear of grinding it off. If you know what I'm trying to tell you.
get that one up a little tighter. Alrighty. So what's going to happen is, as you can see, I'm going to weld that solid all the way along there, all around there, all around there. I'm going to leave probably. I'll leave the front side. I might. I might come along and tack it every inch or six inches. But what I'm going to do is I weld solid all the way along there, all the way around there. Now what I'm going to do is take a piece of square stock, and I'm going to run a piece of square stock from here around to the post, just like that. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. That's hot. And we're able to pause for a second so I can use the washroom. Pause. I'm back. Alrighty. I've had that piece locked down. This piece here is just tacked on this side, tacked on that side, but basically the same thing is going to go on. I'll take the, get the clamps out of the way and I'll put them on the other side because that's where they're going next. And then we'll make that corner go to that post. And when I make that corner, I'm not making it to fit the cab corner. I'm not doing that. I'm making it to be inside the cab corner. The cab corner will be dictated by the, the sill below this. So this is the sill below the door. The cab corner will be dictated by that piece. And I have a, I have a, what I have for that, I have a, an idea for the cab corner below because we need that shape that's below there. But that, that's, that's another video, in my opinion. So these are just going on here because um, this is going to be the next place that's going to be lifted up and welded. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the other piece on the other side. Kind of really, really brings the floor back up in place, doesn't it? You can see the floor have it sag down from, you know, standing on it and whatever. I would say that that would have had rubber mounts underneath it before. Um, before. Uh, I'm not sure that, yeah. Alrighty, so I'm going to make a, a corner for this here out of square stock. I'm going to add it to this square stock, weld it to this, and bring it around to that post. So make sh to make sure everything's tight and right, I just can't leave that square stock there. I'm also going to have to make a, or not also have to, but I'm going to make a piece of flat stock or a pattern out of paper, out of some one eighth plate and maybe do three quarter inch and come down around here. So when I lay my metal on this piece, half of this piece, it'll have something here and all the way along the back. That, that's what the square stock is for, is for that sheet of metal that comes around. So I'm just gonna end up me measuring or uh, making a pattern of this, going to the roller, sheet of metal, piece of piss, nothing to it, right? Nothing to it, because I'm just making a pattern to fit that hole. This is the section here where it's going to take a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of brain work, and that sort of stuff. Oh, I'm making that over there, so I'm going to grab some scissors. Grab a piece of paper. Alrighty, let's do it. Not, I'm not, say it again, I'm not making this square stock for the cab corner. Do not know where it's going yet because I haven't made this cab corner. The cab corner um, will dictate what the cab corner looks like in the bottom because the cab corner is going to come down. It's not going to hit this piece. It's an inside construction piece. It didn't hit this piece. We're going to come down and it's going to be over here and it's going to weld on the bottom of the sill. So I'm going to have to make a sill here, this shape like a round shape and the cab corner will weld down on top of it to give me that body line. So that's what I'm gonna do. I got so I got a straight edge over there. I know where my straight edge is here because I'm rubbing it with my finger. Mm. 
I'm gonna go with that one. I'll do what Jim said. All right, let's just cross that off. Pretty basic. Just want more or less for strength. As you can see, good and strong, nothing's going anywhere. Got it all connected together. Now we're gonna have another one. I think you'll find that there's uh, a, a cross member or a brace on the back side of your cab anyways. If you have a truck that's you know, been smashed in the back, there's generally something in there, construction in there that's glued to the back of your cab that keeps it in place. That's what we're going for. Let's get some square stock going here. A pair of gloves. straight there but I'm just taking this it's on the long side that's the short side this is the long side long side just so I have enough cut off a little bit longer than I need it Pretty near, pretty near straight going on right here. And I need this to bend. So I'm gonna do this. Let's do it. Body hammer. Get sharper. Go like that. So we need that sharper down there. We'll cut them again. Maybe up to here somewhere. Another one to close there. Close. Okay. 
what I'm going to do is, before I even get going, just to make sure, I'm going to start the welder up, tack that, make sure it stays in place. Throwing them nice hilt hats around, that's not a thing to do, is it, baby? Huh? Baby buys them for me, and I'm throwing them around. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack the corners of the bad boy so it don't take off on me. I've got it in the right spot, I'm thinking. This way here is not going to take off on me. take off on me. Let's cut it and see if we can make it work. I want to check this piece out before I cut it and see if it is the piece I want. Are you the piece I want? Pretty darn close. I think I could cut. up to this. Let's cut it. It's still hot. holes in my gloves. It was the mark. Here's the piece that we want. Got a little piece I'm going to chew off there to get it to come down a little bit. I can chew it off this end a little bit to bring that in a little bit. Just chew a little bit more off. Sorry, sweetheart. Wrong side. Gap is for penetration. Now we're looking good there now. I have to chew that off. See, there's a piece of weld, weld holding that up there. Let's uh, let's make it look like something. Uh, keep this on. Let's make it look like something. Well, the corners so it can't take off on me.
right. Throw it over there. Get it off the hose. Uh, take this helmet off for a second. Turn that welder off. Stomping around like the Jolly Green Giant, aren't I? Huh, baby? Put a little clamp on it. We'll throw a little vice grip on it. Way there, we can hold it. I got it inside there. Ouch, it's hot. Let's do it with some needle nose instead. I like this 24 grit flapper wheel. We'll flap it off right quick. Other kind of wheel for that in the inside. Just a hard bend. Instead of trying to bend it and get it in there back and forth, I just do what I'm doing here. Turn the welder on. Clamp that back up. Get off. I'm going to clean that off. This is all going to be cut off here. Hmm, probably a lot easier to cut it off now than later. After I get that piece on there, you know what I'm trying to say? Cut it off now. Cut it off now. That way there it's done. This helmet is trying me. It's trying me. 
and just have to think for a second. I'm going to come around here with a new piece of a new cab corner coming around. It's got to come around. We want it to come around because this piece is coming down like this. But I want this piece to to weld to here. So I'm just wanting to know how I'm going to cap it off. This is not going to be there. So just cut it off. Don't worry about it. Gas. Going to end up making a new sill for the truck because it's it's not what I want. Pull that out of there. Ah, room my grip for those. Just get a pair of channel locks. Just rip it off. Let's get that off there. There we go. Yeah, we're cooking. So we got that cut off. The post is still connected because it's on the floor there. That's what's holding it up, the post right here. So all this, I'm going to end up shearing this all off. No doubt in my mind because it's got a bunch of stuff that I don't like underneath. You can see all the metal inside, the metal on the outside. I think it's had, to re had a repair done to it. So we're basically not going there with that. a flapper wheel straighten that out a little bit I think it's just the right time the time is not after I put that on because I'm not going to be able to get at it gas. Cooking with gas. I need the floor there. I want to bring that up nice and tight. I do that. I also want to change that back. There's a little bit of weld there that I don't like. I want to be able to bring that piece of metal down.
Yeah, we've got that cleaned up looking good. I've got a welder that's too far away. I'm gonna bring it around the corner a little bit. Just a little bit. Cooking. All right, I'm going to nail that right on the corner. Eh. To nail it anywhere, to be honest with you. I think I'll just leave it for now. I'll weld it on after. So, basically, I just want to cut this to come around the corner nice and right. Just going to tack it and take a look at it. Always tack it, take a look at it. Basically, I'm just bringing it around so it comes around straight, that's all. I'm not interfering in the cab corner itself. Not interfering in the cab corner itself. It's there for structure. Two, I'm saying it's good. Still going to take a look at it. I like it. Just welding it in place before I put the heat to it. And the reason being so it don't take off. As soon as you weld something up or put the heat to it, it wants to move. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting it in place. I'm just going to leave it like that. You know what I'm going to do there, I'm going to weld it up and, uh, and I'm going to wait for a while. I'm going to take this other piece, the piece that I made, we'll make another piece of square stock for that. Uh, we'll weld it to the post here. That gives us one up here, that'd be one, po one up in here, two and, and three at the bottom. So now when we get our sheet metal, we've got a piece of sheet metal coming down. I might even run, I'm not sure yet, I might run some square stock down here. Don't think I need to. Don't think I need to. Don't think I need to. But basically, uh, square in here. I can make one whole piece as far as that goes across the back and uh, take the welding, um, take a little bit of the welding out in the center. I could just drill a couple holes there and plug weld it on, or I could tack it from the inside make one sheet go across the back from here over to there. I might do that. It would make it just one, one welding seam across the back. And then it's on to the cab corner, cab corner. But I still have to make this piece. It's, it's a sill that's underneath the door. Haven't got the doors opened up on this bad boy yet, on this side, or neither of them. But I would need to make a new sill that comes around um, that mat, like so the cab corner can come down on um, I have to make that. Then there has to be a piece that comes down here that meets that cab corner because I can't have it just dang come around and, and end. I, I have to have a piece that fills it in. So the metal is going to come down and weld on top of the cab corner and then come up and go across. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Um, that, but that's what I had to do um, to, to sort of finish the surgery of the truck. There's a bit of welding going on there to weld the floor all the way along the back, grind it off, make it look nice. I want to weld it solid all the way along there. I've got another piece of square stock that I've got to make for that corner and add it onto that post. The, the piece that I made is not for the cab corner. It's for structural, inside structural for what's going on. I'm happy with the chassis, happy with it. Um, the piece they put in the side, they did a very nice job on it. Can't complain. Um, if you wanted to make that chassis perfect and like Jolene's chassis for her Bugatti, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying nice, 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 you would have to sandblast it and fill it, prime it, and paint it. If you like what has happened here, throw a like in. If you would like somebody else to see and maybe help them on their project, share. And if you um, know somebody that's interested in old cars that just want to sit down and watch some car content, 
subscribe. Get them to subscribe. Thank you very much for coming back. I appreciate it. Have a great day. And I'm going to spend the rest of the day with Jolene. And you come back and we'll be here tomorrow.